Here it is, the bestest of all the best lists. No, not the best moments of 2021, though if I had to pick a favourite it would probably be that I think you should leave Ghost Tour sketch. Can we or can we not swear? Yes! I'm not changing any rules! Big fat load of c*** then! Nope, it's the best albums of the year video. Look, you know how this works, I know how this works, I, I think. We'll, tr we'll just try as we go along, but before we get into the list proper, here are some honourable mentions that were really good but just missed out on the top spot and I'll soundtrack it to the Tony Hawk Pro Skater menu music. With that out of the way, hello and welcome, I'm Liam the News Reviewer. Here are the 25 best albums of 2021, starting with... We're kicking things off with one of my early favourites from 2021, but don't let its low placement act as a course correction for too much hype. Rara this year just kept wowing me, and the fact this album made on here is indicative of how impressive it is. Speaking of impressive, Pompoko's Cheer. This is the exact kind of peppy, vibrant punk that honestly reminds me of something like The Bob, which is a, a glowing seal of approval, if ever I've heard one. Yeah, it's cheeky, cheerful, sometimes cynical, and just bursting with colour. <laughs> There's always an album that I finally get around to at the turn of the year that makes an impact on this list and 2021's honour goes to a beginner's mind. The concept on his own is tantalised enough, but the fact it was Sufjan Stevens and Angelo De Augustine who decided to write songs about a movie they heard the night prior makes it all the better. Like any movie marathon, there's a fluctuation in terms of quality, but it never plummets below the floor into mediocrity. It's all good, and when it reaches its cinematic peaks, like on a song like Back to Oz, it's just some of the most gorgeous music Sufjan has ever put his name on. With lyrics that sound like somebody got a series worth of black book scripts and just put them in a blender. It's no surprise that Dry Cleaning's debut album is as divisive as it is. Some may lament the spoken word nature of their output, but I'm definitely in the camp of people who are here for Florence Shaw's ad-lib-esque approach to singing, and with the punchy performances that go along with it, it's no surprise why, in a year full of top-notch UK post-punk, Dry Cleaning find themselves near the top of the washing pile. Their first album in over a decade, it's still pretty astounding that no act really scratches that same gushing pussy itch like Arab Strap. As days get dark is a depraved return that is no less delightful for the quality songwriting that showcases. Narrated a la Gruesome Tales for Gruesome Kids, the stories on here range from Zootopia mixed with American History X to Quite literally, your dad having a midlife crisis. His Days Get Dark has the same appeal to me as the best episodes of an anthology series like Inside Number 9. Sometimes I remember a bit and I go, oh that was that was pretty cool. And then other times I remember something that just gives me the same shudders as the ones that you get when you see a pile of washing at 3 o'clock in the morning. Both feelings I, I appreciate in their own different wee ways. <laughs> The moment I heard the end of opener 70% with its That So Raven vision teasing me with what's to come without spoiling the fun, I knew Fishmonger was going to be my kind of album. Tens of listens later and that proved to be the case as underscores have set themselves up as an act that can really do whatever the- <laughs> 
play one and do it really well. With how many genres are being juggled, you've got hyper pop, pop punk, indie pop, pop rock, just all of the pops. For the longest time I thought it was a band, underscores, I thought it was more than one person. That actually is just one individual, which is testament to their abilities that they could make me think that. I just think that give it a few years and underscores will have amassed the size of audience that they absolutely deserve. Oh, you want to see a pandemic? Really hot. Shit, remove us from the game. I don't need This shit will really get crazy. Yeah. I don't lean but my house do off the hill with the mean view. Nice house if you look out, you can see some eagles and a few yachts. An amalgamation of the sun kissed summer sound of Flower Boy and eclectic experimentation of Igor. Call me if you get lost, seeks to be the ideal offspring of these two albums and does so wonderfully, even carrying some of the good genes of its grandparents Goblin and Bastard when it comes to arrogance and bite. I don't feel like there's the same level of ambition as there has been during the rest of Tyler's new acclaimed era, but the ode to Dat Piff mixtapes, the sheer confidence and the fact that you hear something like Wolfgang in the year 2021 is just, yeah, makes up for that. There's plenty of jams, plenty of bangers, just Plenty to like about this album. Don't forget to come and pick up your feelings. Don't need no pieces. Back when I originally reviewed Whole Tales, it was a mass and a fair bit of love, but but nothing mad, nothing wild. It is fair to say that that situation may have changed. As much as I'd love to get my contrarian points by saying Jasmine Sullivan doesn't deserve the hype, I'll just have to get those by saying Spider-Man 3 is a good film because what she achieves on Hotels is pretty commendable. I really respect the commitment of having a song interview song structure and ensuring those chats in between are interesting, all tying into the themes of the record. Jasmine singing is never not amazing and I hope that in future releases we get more of the out there R&B songs like Price Tags and The Other Side. The Channel Orange-esque like vocal mix on that latter track by the way. Yeah, I'm a hope for that. You came here to welcome me to what is the end. In a year full of albums of grandiose adventures and concepts, I really do appreciate an album like I Know I'm Funny Haha <laughs> coming along to show how simplicity can be key. That's not to say there's no depth, quite the opposite actually. I'm referring more to Faye Webster being content to wear her heart on her sleeve, chip in with some great guitar playing and showing that that pairing of elements is enough to make for a <laughs> good album. The way that Faye effortlessly jumps from being confident and cocky to mo, mo, mo. Why don't you like me? Nobody likes me. Is one, very relatable, and two, just a good display of the fluid, layered lyricism that makes I Know I'm Funny Haha the exact sardonic cheat that title would have you expecting. Get Fuck a bitch, I don't trust no bitch with my government. Fuck a friend, I don't want no friends with no open hands. There's always been a bit of a pep to Vince Staples' step, but on his fourth album, there's also a bit of a slouch to his posture, almost like he's a musician turned buckaroo with the past and present weighing on him big time. This manifests in a delivery that could be described as monotone or doer face but to me is more Kubrick stare than anything, right down to one track literally being called The Shining. At a tight 22 minutes, the more sombre feel to Vince's self-titled effort doesn't feel like a mere filter, more like pottery with regret, fears and depression seeping into every crevice, though the end result has a necessary glaze thanks to Vince's sharp wit and ever sharper observations. As compact as it is cathartic, as good as it is gloomy, and oh boy is it gloomy. Using the artwork for this album as sort of a Rorschach test, my mind immediately went to The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, which of course it did, of course it did, it's me we're talking about. I just thought of the miles and miles of lush scenery that you get to just eat up, just let your mind wander as you take it all in, and while it is one of my favourite games, that aspect of it has always been something that I appreciate a fair deal. I don't think there's much of a disconnect between that and Paranol's record, at least when it comes to the images it conjures up. 
What they make on here is simply beautiful, but not totally conventional considering all the distorted blemishes it proudly wears. From what I've read of the lyrics, this pairs up really well with the lead singer, who may or may not be the sole member of this band, trying to ascend the heights of their misery. To see the next part of the dream is nothing short of being a very admirable and ambitious album. Turnstile have been energetic since their inception, the kind of band that if you place them in front of a turbine would be able to keep the lights on for a state or even an entire country from the wind generated from their roundhouse kick and windmill inducing slice of hardcore. New album Glow On doesn't reinvent the formula, instead tweaking it to allow the band to reach new heights in a literal sense. Alien Love Call is the kind of song that would have the tractors ready to smash the sellout button, but it's hard not to be impressed with how lovely this track is on its own merits, and how easily Turnstile can balance things out with heaving riffy tunes like Blackout and songs that mesh both worlds together, New Heart being a wonderful summation of this new ethos. Turnstile are content playing those kind of claustrophobic basement type venues which is absolutely ideal for the heart racing rock that they dish out easily but I feel now anywhere that they play will have to kind of allow for a certain amount of headroom for that ascending bliss that they are now capable of providing. You know after putting triple three on an admittedly lower spot on my 2020 album of the year list than I would now it was really nice of them to name his new album after me. This is what I really want. With each new Blade release, I keep finding myself buying into what he's selling more and more and honestly, I still struggle to describe it at points. In terms of metaphors, it's a tin of quality streets coming around once a year to brighten up my days, just if that tin was full of the superior green sweets of course. Blade's pop sensibilities and his knack for being a bit of a goofball, a goofy boy that loves to goof around, they should clash, they shouldn't work together but they do and it just boggles my mind every time. This is just some exciting, eclectic, eccentric, e-boy excellence and I just, I, I love me some alliteration. Who loves alliteration? This guy right here. I'd like to make a formal apology to Nat from Left London for my best songs of the year video where I said that the H in their album's title stood for uh, it was a head or heart, I was doing something like that. Th there's literally a title track that explains what the letters in the title stand for. M my defence, I'm the latest person to fall victim to being an arty farty fuck. <gasps> it's a condition, Google it. Moving swiftly on to the good stuff, and boy do there's a place for you here have that in bucket loads. Saying this is a personal project, it's a bit of an obvious one, but the ways and angles in which it is are wonderful. The Ballad of Marion Zaincheck is a wiki rabbit hole transformed into a beautiful account of a man doing right by many. Out of my mind is some mental health representation in a way we don't see enough of, but should. And I've said more than enough about the opener, pills and good advice, but opening the project with a 10 minute epic that floors me every time. Will you leave me no choice but to praise you endlessly? I, I hope you're happy with yourself. Make me sick. I wouldn't want to call Wolf Alice's third LP a glow up because they've been consistently good since our 2015 debut but man, Blue Weekend really does blow their last two records out of the park. They really could have set themselves up for failure with the concept behind it potentially bogging down their usual sound but both work hand in hand to provide me with some of the most intricate and emotional tracks of the year in the form of How Can I Make It Okay, Last Man on Earth, No Hard Feelings and Lipstick on the Glass. Even the big Animac Radio 1 tier singles that could have assumedly fallen short on the larger concept and vision don't, with Smile being pretty satisfying and true to its core of looks being deceiving. By the way, the percussion on here biting in such a way that it sounds like it would be perfect for a cartoon smile gleaming. Yoink! Hey! Let me use my chef's kiss quota for this one. The highest bit of praise that I could and will give Blue Weekend is that it's one of the most fully realised indie rock albums 
from an NME core act since the days of Silent Alarm and you could have it so much better. If you know, you know. Stop. Hot take, but I think video games are pretty neat, and the world's a beautiful place seem to agree, with Dark Souls being an influence on this record, right up to the album title of Illusory Walls. So I guess the whole comparison about that series and this album being brutal, gargantuan battles revolving around seemingly impossible fights just writes itself, eh? I guess it's a bit lame that the evils we have to face as addressed by the band are capitalism and the evils of man instead of a cool <coughs> wolf a sword but you know I guess this album still paints the scene with all the necessary shades to make it immersive and just like that franchise we still get our splashes of hope to keep us soldiering on remaining as both sonically and lyrically that it isn't insurmountable as it may seem. With the throwback closing lines on illusory walls the ethos is established the world is a beautiful place but we have to make it that way. Now make sure you go play Croc Legend of the Gobble so you understand the comparisons that I draw between that game and Bjork's 2022 hyperpop album that will happen, it's gonna happen. <laughs> I can't believe that 2022 marks five years since Igloo Ghost made such an impression on me and countless of our listeners with Neo Wax Bloom, the kind of album that to this day requires a floss and mouthwash routine for just how much of a, a sugar rush that it is. I always wondered what Seamus would end up doing next to prevent his unique sound from growing stale and with Lee Line Leon it's not just that he keeps things fresh, He's improved it tenfold. What we get on here is one of the most immersive records I've heard in quite some time. The soundscapes Igloo Ghost has created before were animated and vibrant, but Leyline Eon feels realised a world I'm actually existing in. I know there'll be lots of lore out there that would make me know the ins and outs of what this album is going for, but I don't need it. The sounds of rumbles, glitches, twitches and sparks helps to actualise a rustic domain once dormant but now bursting with life. Whether I'm having an active listen, just pinpointing details and trying to make sense of them, or I'm just kind of looking down over this realm just letting whatever's going to unfold, unfold, I have a great time with this album upon every visit. Kuka has been a bit of a banger talisman over the course of the 2010s, the kind of thing Omi and crew would have fought tooth, nail and monkey tail for. Her collaborations with Flume, Vince Staples and more always end up being absolute ear candy, yet despite working since 2012, wrestling is only her debut, though you wouldn't be able to tell. Kuka sounds like someone on a mission, ready to prove to herself and others that she deserves to be in the limelight. And you know what, I'm not going to put up a fight with her about it, I'm not going to argue with her on this one because over the course of 12 tracks, she just does not let up. Every song on wrestling makes an indent, but what impresses me most is how reluctant Kuka is to stick to what we know works best for her. We get some ominous moody cuts like the title track in Drowning, but there's also the vibrance and beauty of a song like Your World or the shimmering splendid elegance of Sky Brown. Confidence is a bound on wrestling and what it results in is one of the most unique and lovable pop albums of not just a year, but the past few at that. You know, I can't remember a time where an artist has dropped an album that I love and then followed it up with something that is even better within the same year. I think maybe Death Grips in 2012 with Money Store and No Love Deep Web. I think that was the last time because Delete Zeke right here dropped Teen Week, a juvenile but cathartic album that I really, really enjoyed. I really warmed up to, but I just could not have prepared myself for what the follow-up frailty would accomplish. For someone with just over a year's worth of experience under their belt, Delete Seek seems to have concocted a pretty effective formula, creating noise pop gems that have an equal emphasis on both words of that genre. Future efforts will no doubt be more polished, but the imperfections that haunt this record 
only go to add to its charm, especially when it gets to the cacophony of tracks like Your Clothes, Search Party and Movies for Guys. Along with beat boot melodies to die for, there's also an earnestness that ranges from compelling to ugly that gives this project an honest hyperpop heart that I find super endearing. It's dazzling, it's distorted, it's damn fine. Damn fine. Well, I, I guess it's finally time to talk about it. In my opinion, reviewing music objectively is a redundant process and a boring one at that, and by the time I get to Phoenix, it goes to show why in two different ways. First of all is the emotional nature of this record, an album that was said to be more of a sombre affair from the get go and made all the more potent with the passing of Grogs in 2020. Then there's the music itself which on paper should be rotten, songs threatened to implode, unstable and quaking like the OG Xbox intro, seemingly unpredictable and yet the more I go on with what should be negative descriptors, I'm basically just listing off why this album works so well. Songs that initially bewildered me like Superman That and Footwork in a Forest Fire have now wormed their way into me and become new favourites of mine, while the tracks that had me my feelings like Knees and Top Picks For You haven't lost not point not not one percent of their appeal. I can't say for certain this will be the last that we see of Injury Reserve, but if it is, by the time I get to Phoenix is the perfect swan song of an album. Albeit with its experimental nature, it sounds more like a AI representation of that phrase, jagged edges and all. Now if you had told me before 2021 that one of my favourite albums was going to feature lines about easter egg advice and hoping that your dinner's warm, I would have I actually know that makes a lot of sense. I've brought up post Brexit post punk on this channel so many times over the last 12 months that it would be the first rule in a Liam the Music Reviewer drinking game, but when it comes to the cream of the crazed corn, it was Squid's debut album that won me over the most. I'm trying to think of a reason as to why it bit out the likes of Black Country New Road, Black Midi, and Dry Clean for reasons other than just the songs are good, but honestly, it may just have to be that. There's an air of freshness and fun that the title of this album would conjure up and creativity on here bucket loads, narrators will climax will stick with me for a lifetime, and ending to boy racers is the exact nightmarish creation that I hope will play when I accidentally put a GameCube disc in my PS2 and cause the universe to collapse. Amazing, memorable, <laughs> and really <laughs> odd. God has nothing to do with this, leaving out of it found itself pretty high on my 2020 album year list with its shift and sinister sound that had me in my feet at every turn. Follow up I Lie Here Buried My Rings and My Dresses is an album that doesn't directly address, but it definitely sounds like one birthed in such an unprecedented horrible time. It could have been very easy for this album to just be more of the same, but to think that of I Lie Here in my opinion would be incredibly naive. For one, Backwash's performances and songwriting have improved big time, making a real impact on every song which just kind of plants the dark seeds for a lifetime of revisits. Tying all of this up in a crooked ominous bow is the production that is some of my favourite of the year, 666 in Lusaxa. Sounds like a Kanye beat if he worshipped a different bible. The title track is Cacophonous, emphasis on the coffin, and Blood in the Water has a clipping credit which Backwash rides expertly. On every level, I Lie Here is a dream follow-up LP which shows there are plenty more levels to navigate in Backwash's Inferno. We're living in a mercurial world and I'm proud to say that I'm a mercurial girl. The debut project of Miami Jumo Magdalena Bay is simply one of the most charming albums I've heard while running this channel. It's up there for the likes of Benito Generation and putting the biggest cheesy grin on my face which in times of isn't super common but 
it's no less appreciated. Mercurio World is synth pop for the soul and it would have been so easy as a first full length project for it to meander but there's just a sheer confidence that stops that from happening. It would have you believing that they'd been making music for a handful of decades, not just a few years. Where to even start when praising individual songs? The groovy, soothing dawn of the season, the cheeky bit pop banger you lose that would soundtrack a retro rave, the breezy house inspired sherry that mesmerises as much as it engages with its bedridden depression narrative. Secrets bracket your fire? More like this album brackets is fire. Uh, so yeah, this album is really good, meticulously made, and joint as my favourite pop album of the decade so far. Hope that makes up for that really bad joke. Speaking of favourites, clearly everything that I've talked about so far has been a favourite of mine. But boy, this top three, I have made lists for pretty much every year of the 2010s, whether it was blogging or videos, obviously I've done one for 2020. But 2021, man, I've got to be honest, this is the most difficult top three I've had to try and like be concrete on. Even 2016, the best year for music, hands down. When I heard my number one album that year, that was it. The rest, kind of everything else fell into place. It was very natural. There's been a lot of thinking here, but that makes this top three all the more exciting. So let me present to you my picks for the best three albums of 2021. I'm a smart man. I do smart things. And one of the smart things I've done recently is read Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zoner, who really has nothing to do with Japanese breakfast except psych! They're the same person! The same person. Um, it is a brilliant memoir about dealing with grief, about bonding over shared culture, in this case food. And the reason that I bring it up, other than to brag because smart man I read book, is it is just further proof that Michelle Zoner is a complete brilliant wordsmith. In the same way that she manages to have me drooling over our descriptions of traditional Korean cuisine, Japanese breakfast also has this absurdly special talent of cooking up delicious tunes on all fronts. On a purely sonic and melodic level, Ghibli is comfort food, the pasta of albums that I could have every day and not get sick of. These songs are so textured, so fine-tuned, that if I were to reach out and touch them, they'd suck me in like a Super Mario 64 portrait and I wouldn't put up a fight. Then there's what Michelle has to say and boy oh boy, much like how all these songs sound different yet all fit perfectly on this menu, the fact we get Posing in Bondage, a sultry song all about yearning for intimacy, and Tactics, a track where she wants nothing but someone to be as far away as he physically can be, in quite close succession is proof of that on a lyrical frontier. Not only that, but the words she chooses are perfect, as is the case on triumphant opener Paprika, with that chorus address and being a musician in a way that really has me scrambling about trying to find an example of anyone saying it is better or as beautifully as her. And that feeling extends to Jubilee as a whole. It is my favourite singer-songwriter album of the year and kind of ticking a few other genre boxes along the way. And to build on this bloated food metaphor even more, if Jubilee was a food, it is the exact kind of thing that I would order on an episode of Off Menu, which is just as surreal in likelihood as this album is. I think it would be fair to call Little Sims a visionary. We already had a taste for it when it came to our prior output, each album ramping up the creativity and ambition, but with Simbi, it's the clinical execution that breathes Little Sims ideas into life. It can sometimes feel like making a personal album would require the scope to be toned down. Not the case here. Where some musicians aim at making their albums like movies, Simbi is more like a play of the way Sims performs, in front of you at all times, not relinquishing your attention for a moment. Big ambitions could have easily resulted in a bloated runtime, but Sims is meticulous. Every song has a purpose, even the Emma Thompson articles exist for a reason beyond being the flex of a connection. It's the kind of record I can imagine Sims having a even folder 
of blueprints for. And when we get inside it for the songs themselves, unfurling that bow, keeping it held tight, I'm taken aback by the depth of creativity that's in abundance. I'd happily break down song by song why I love this album so much, but Simbi is one of those records that, while its singles work really well out of context, they still are quite fulfilling. It is, yeah, it's a record that deserves and wants to be kind of taken as one whole experience, which I implore you to do so if you haven't already. It is, if any album this year, if any album this year kind of gave me the same feelings as the most visceral drama and adrenaline pump and blockbuster, it was this album right here. Now, I've had a strange relationship with electronic music over the years back in secondary school when all the dubstep wub 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 music and it was just like sim track and every like Call of Duty YouTube video. Hated it. <laughs> Hated it so much. Um, I remember that a pal of mine at school actually chucked my bag in a bin because I kept going on about how oh. it was. Honestly, probably deserved it. Um, and I think the reason why I hated it, my reasoning for it, however I thought it was, I thought that it was quote unquote not real, just not real music and obviously my attitudes have changed over the years. Um, I love a lot of electronic albums, even dubstep, I've got a few favourites in there now and yeah, I bring all this pre-rambling up because if I could go back in time and show my younger self a record, an electronic record that would just make them change their tune, it would be my pick for 2021's best album. Don't judge a book or an album by its cover, except when it will benefit you in a self-indulgent YouTube video. There's a reason that Helen Nurture's cover looks familiar. I'd go as far as saying it looks just like the iconic scenery from that Windows XP background. Back then it was just bare green grass, but here Porter Robinson's lying down face first into the soil and dirt while blooming beauty surrounds him. The theme of using something so inherently technological such as that XP Hill or Porter's arrangements of instruments he uses in making one of the most human records I've ever heard is an oxymoron that leads to excellence. Now that I've hit out of the most painful piece of postgrad analysis ever, I can just gush about nurturing it any way I want. I could start from the beginning, little rebel that I am, with the gorgeous lifelike which instills me with the same nostalgia I got when wandering Hyrule Field for the first time. Or maybe I'll jump to the end. Those are trying to feel alive being the emotional climax the record has been leading up to. I've listened to Nurture about 20 times and I'm yet to get through this song without tearing up. We've got two artisan slices of bread. Th that Jubilee review will have just changed me forever. And and now we're getting to everything in between. And honestly, we're dealing with like a, a shaggy and scoopy gargantuan sandwich of just gourmet villains. The constantly building, constantly bopping look at the sky, the uplifting slice of future bass that is musician, one of the most wholesome songs ever, Sweet Time, the bitter sweet but beautiful something comforting. Lyrically and sonically, all these songs result in a telling introspective record about being creative, being alone, being depressed, being human, and it does it in a way I've never witnessed before. Hell, even the purely instrumental cuts that don't tie into this concept are still drop dead gorgeous. Nurture just does not waste a second. I find it so funny that the album that Porter Robinson made before this, Worlds in 2014, would be the exact kind of thing that I would have hated back then, that I would have thought I was too good for. And now, like almost a decade since I've graduated and just moved on with my life, he's went out and made an album that I can see myself coming back for the rest of my life. I'm already so under its spell and I can just, I can see myself returning to this comfort indefinitely. So for that reason and for all of my other ramblings, that's why Nurture by Porter Robinson is the best, best album of 2021. I can make something good. 
it was hard fought but making this video just made me realise how much I really have loved 2021 for the music that it's gave me. I would say it's the best year for music this decade so far but honestly it doesn't really stand for much because we're only a fifth of the way through it. But yeah, I had a lot of fun putting together this list so let me know what you made of it, made of my picks, let me know what your pick for album of the year was. I'd be very interested in hearing it. Thank you so much for watching this video and leaving a like if you have and yeah thank you to my wonderful patrons on screen or not you guys are just so great um and yeah for in terms of future videos there'll be a channel update coming out soon maybe like a, maybe two weeks after this video comes out um and then after that will be the first review roundup of 2022 and it's a 2021 there but it is 2022 already so much great stuff for us to cover to talk about so i'm looking forward to that but until then Thank you as always for watching, stay safe and stay hydrated.